rewiring the depressed brain. Does that even work? And if so, how? Now, first of all, yes, it does work. Um, feeling depressed and also feeling anxious, those are two phenomena in psychology that are one of the most treatable ones. So you can definitely do something about that. Also, I quickly want to share the concept of neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity basically says that your brain always adapts and changes. If you're lying on the couch, your brain becomes more lazy. And the areas that are, for example, responsible for discipline become smaller, uh, less well connected. But also if you train something, for example, you're reading a lot um, or you're doing more sports, your drain, brain also adapts and changes. It works according to the principle, use it or lose it. And just in an example, the hippocampus, it's an area in your brain which is um, in the limbic system. The limbic system is the emotional system pretty much in the, mid of, uh, in the middle of your brain. And part of this limbic system is the hippocampus, um, which is responsible for a lot of things, but also for simply storing memory. In, uh, so information into your long-term memory. And if you're severely depressed, studies have shown that this hippocampus is up to 25% smaller and again, you know, your brain adapts and changes. Um, and that's also, by the way, the reason why when you're severely depressed, you can actually not mem memorize information so well because this hippocampus, who is partly responsible for doing exactly that, is 25% smaller. And that's the concept of neuroplasticity. Everything changes and adapts. But that's also hopeful because it means if you can cure yourself and you let go of this depression over the long time, long term, your brain is also going to change again and different areas, emotional areas become bigger, dense, some become smaller um, areas that, that are responsible for, for example, uh, inhibiting specific emotions also or managing yourself and others responsible for feeling more relaxed, more grateful, also become uh, larger in your brain. And that's exactly why you can change and why you can rewire the brain because you rewire your neurons and the way they connect and how much they connect and which, which area. So that's possible. Yeah. Now let's talk a little bit about how you would do that. And let's actually dig a little bit into the deeper psychology. Now, if you're depressed, the idea is that actually behind this depression if you take a deeper look behind this depression is, is actually some sort of fear some sort of anxiety some sort of unresolved conflict that you're carrying around and you sort of gave it up sort of also subconscious and you just gave up and basically turned towards depression and feel more depressed and um, this conflict you're probably not even aware. Even now that I'm sharing this, you don't even know. I'm, I'm giving you an example. I once had a client who felt um, helpless, down, very often in life, reoccurringly, and she didn't know why, why is that? Why is it always happening to me? Why am I feeling down? And by getting to know her more, also going back into her biography and understanding her life, we noticed, well, first of all, your mother was extremely successful. She was a lonely uh, only child, also only grew up with her mother, extremely successful mother, wrote 20 books, uh, coaching like the most successful people in Germany. Um, also, you know, she's living in the 21st century, this pressure of I need to be a woman, I need to be successful, uh, feminism and everything gave her this idea of I also need to be successful. I also need to hustle hard and I also need to achieve. But then while talking to her longer, we also noticed actually she has a totally different desire as well she just wants to relax. She just wants to live a good life. She just wants to go into nature, meet friends. She just wants to have a kid and a child and become a mother. But both of them, both of those ideas don't work together, at least in her head, in her brain. Because if she would give up all her, her discipline uh, and all the desire and, and, and ambition just then to become a mother, and relax more, she cannot bear that. It's too much for her. So actually at this point, she decided to just hustle hard and work hard, 
But while doing this, she doesn't feel authentic at all. She feels empty and there's a big piece missing that she's not allowing her to leave room for that right now, which is being herself, be, being a mother, enjoying more. And by the way, being ambitious is also part of her, but she's just decided for one uh, aspect right here for one part and totally neglecting the other one but actually there is a conflict that she's having and she was not even so aware of this this was kind of like a thing next to it we had this conversations you know over hours and she was kind of like mentioning it as a side note and when I pulled this side note out and made this a main note and talked about that then over time we noticed wait this is actually this is actually the main quest that she was inhibiting in a sense not even being aware of it, only like partly, but not really, that this is the main struggle she's having right now and she cannot take a decision on that. And then we worked on that. But this conflict that was there, this unresolved conflict, when we looked at this, there was a lot of anxiety coming up and fear, you know, fear of not making use of your life the most, fear of letting other people down, such her mother, such as her mother. A lot of fears involved there. So going through this process and dealing with this depressive face, um, she, she faced a lot of demons, a lot of anxiety and fear was coming up. But that, I, I, um, I interpreted, interpreted it actually that as, an, as a success because she's coming now down from depression up to fear and anxiety. And that's already an improvement in her emotional state. Also, um, when you're feeling depressed, you often feel helpless. This concept of learned helplessness is a psychological term. It's very much connected to depression. Simply people know that I'm helpless. I cannot do anything about this. And I learned this over a period of time that I can do whatever I want. It's not going to get better. And that was the same with her. She said, you know, I tried a lot. I go on holidays. I got a new boyfriend. I do this. I do that. I moved to a different city. I tried different jobs and nothing gets better. And then she felt helpless. Like, I don't know what to do anymore. I'm just, I just learned that I'm helplessly depressed and I don't have any hope anymore. I can't get better. But learning about all those conflicts and anxiety and fear that she actually has, which she was not even aware yet, changed that a little bit. And we noticed while looking at this conflict, it's not an I can't, it's an I won't. I don't want to and I will not to, just a bit stubborn, I don't want to face this conflict, why does the society tell me this, I don't want to do this. And actually, she can change. She's just afraid to make a decision and she's just anxious. And again, that's an improvement. When you're aware of what you're actually afraid of, what are the desires that you're having? Because when we look at this fear, also very important, you know, we went from depression up to fear, then suddenly, some more desires opened up of, yeah, yeah, I want to become a mother, actually. I actually want to relax more. Wow, more desires that she did not have when she was more in this depressed mood. She was like, I don't know what I like. I don't enjoy anything. Opening up the fear, she suddenly had more desire of what she wants. Then also a lot of grief kicked in of the last years, how she lived and, and, and a lot of pain came also up. And then eventually, while resolving this conflict and making a decision, even anger came up. And that was great. Because when you go out down from depression up to anxiety, which is more withdrawing, like, oh, I'm anxious, this is what I'm afraid of. And you don't give up and go back into depression, but instead become angry and like, what is this here? I don't want to live like that anymore. That's when you start to rewire your brain. It's a totally different state being angry about something. Now we can do something with this anger. We can use this drive, this energy, this motivation to actually create a change. And that's how you rewire your brain when you're depressed. To look at the conflict, to look at the actual fear that is actually in your life right now that you don't feel yet. Opening up to that, feeling that pain and eventually turn it even into, into desire, into grief, into anger. Yeah. Also, what I want to mention, because, you know, everybody's always in a different state, always needs something else. But I also noticed that when you're in depressed, when you're in a depressed phase, it's often connected to inhibiting your aggression. Often, you're a people pleaser, you're too nice, you're not setting boundaries properly, you're not telling people what you don't like. 
and you inhibit all that anger that you actually have. And you don't even feel that maybe right now, but you're just too kind. And by learning to set your boundaries, understanding what are your boundaries, even what do I want, what do I not want anymore, you also let go of this depression. You know, because again, depression is about I'm helpless, I cannot do anything, everybody else um, is powerful, but I am not. You learned that you have no power over things. Yes, because you don't share your own needs, your own desires, and because you don't share that, you keep it with yourself, people step over your boundaries, and you start feeling depressed because you keep it all in there. But we want to open this up. And if we look at this aggression that you're inhibiting, we know we notice all those conflicts that you're having, this fear that you're having. I'm, having. I'm afraid of showing myself. I'm afraid that people won't like me. I'm afraid to step up. I'm afraid to say something that, that somebody is not uh, liking it. That's what you're afraid of. And that's why you don't go out and share that. You rather keep it within and then slowly over time it turns into a depression and you don't even know why. And you feel hopeless and helpless. Okay. And, and that's exactly, by the way, um, what, what the goal is when somebody is in this depressive phase because they don't feel like they have responsibility. They, they feel like, I'm just the victim of life. I cannot do anything. I feel helpless, right? And the goal is to turn this helplessness into a sense of responsibility, in a sense of self-determination, in a feeling of, I can change something in this world and I can deal with this and I can have an effect on what I'm doing here. But before you do this, you need to uncover this conflict and the, those fears that you're having, and then we can tackle it. And then you notice, hey, actually things change. Actually, I can do something about life. And then you also feel more passionate. You're like, wait, if I can do this, what if I can do this thing over here as well? And now I notice I have another desire. I would also like to do this. Let me give this a try. Let me do something. Let me change something. And that's how you rewire your brain. And then also, coming back to neuroplasticity, what we said in the beginning, then your brain also starts to change. You become less depressed, your hippocampus becomes bigger again, you can memorize things more. And then with memorizing things more, it's just, by the way, a very specific example with the hippocampus being responsible for the memory. Um, but then if this uh, part becomes larger again, you memorize more things. That's why, again, you feel more powerful, like, oh, whoa, whoa, I'm actually competent, I can actually remember that, connect the dots, I do have power over that. It's not like I'm just losing memory that I cannot access anymore. It's like an upward spiral. A lot of things at the same time happen and a lot of things are interacted and connected. Yeah. If you're curious about figuring out what you're actually afraid of, what's standing behind your depression and what's the, the conflict that you're inhibiting, then I suggest that we are talking, that we actually have a personal conversation. And you can book one. There's a link below this video. We personally talk, we personally build up a custom strategy for you, your personality, your situation, your type. It's always different for everybody else. Um, and create the strategy that would help you to rewire your depressed brain. And that's fully for free, by the way. And that will be already very valuable. And of course, after having actually two calls, we will have two free calls. And we can then um, talk about moving forward together, um, but there's no pressure, there's no need for it. Maybe this free call will be already valuable for you. So make use of that, book that one. And, and also share this video to anybody else where you feel like it might be helpful for them and it might change their lives. You never know who it serves. All right, I'll see you around.